Hello and welcome to the Clockwork Dandy Noodles channel for anime and ramen and all things noodles related. Hello and welcome back. This is indeed the final episode so I apologise last week I think I said there were two episodes left. This actually is the final. This will be the last time I talk to you guys about Moriarty the Patriot in 2020. This is it and at least we're going out on such a good high note so it's going to be sad parting ways for just a little bit friends. I will hopefully see you all again in April next year in 2021 or hopefully I'll see you next season for some different anime so you guys can go ahead here's a nice little slide in guys check out my winter 2021 video this video will tell you what i'm breaking down next season it will also tell you what free anime did i crown as my top free anime of full 2020 so what free animes did i put in the top three and what anime is wearing the crown and you guys might be interested to go and check out that list so there's a little hint go and have a look <laughs> go and have a look children shoo shoo before we get down to it make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel or you may not be able to find my videos again in april when they start airing and i start doing breakdowns for definitely will be season two or season one part two i think that's what they're planning it as so make sure you guys are subscribed i have a discord channel where you can get notifications whenever videos go up on the channel a great place for you to just get no notified of what's going on i also will use that if there is a delay on any videos and i plan to use that as a place to expand a little bit later down the line as i get bigger as a channel so perfect place just to kind of lurk Righty guys, I think as this is the last time we're just going to get straight on into the goodness. This is it. This is the last time I'll be talking to you guys in 2020 about Moriarty the Patriot. We are now discussing episode 11, The Two Detectives Part 2. The open essentially is our recap from last week. So if you had forgotten, we had a murder in a locked cabin. We had William Moriarty versus Sherlock as the two det detectives go head to head to play a game who can uncover the culprit first. And we had a poor, poor mama bear. Mama bear is covered in blood and is now under suspicion of the police as the transport police have now arrived on scene. You don't tend to get that very much in the modern day, so it's quite nice to see that. You're very hard pressed to see a ticket conductor on a train nowadays. <laughs> For the last time, guys, I want to praise Dying Wish as our OP because, as we know, most of the time when there is a second season or a part two core, we generally get new OPs, new EDs. So this will be the last time we get to break down this one. I love it. I really liked Dying Wish. Dying Wish really grew on me. Now that, obviously, I've got a little bit more context... The entire first sequence just plays out a little bit different now that I can see a few little bits. And I've seen that open so many times now. I've picked out a few little bits, which is so nice. I think we couldn't have asked for a better OP for this anime. Absolutely love the song. Let's go back to John being placed into custody. But John pleads his innocence, saying that the blood isn't actually his. He ended up locking into somebody as he exited the toilet. But he's only now just noticed the blood on his clothing. It's nice. It is quite nice. We get to see Lestrade deciding to be a character witness, which is quite nice. He also introduces Sherlock to the transport team. Because obviously Sherlock's fame at this point playing... Playing in his favour, I know he doesn't like it, but it plays in his favour that they have heard of Sherlock. They know who he is. And they also kind of mock Lestrade for having some competence as well, which is quite nice. Lestrade does act as an, a character witness for Watson by saying he's not the kind of person who would murder somebody. Oh my god. Uh, I was just mentioning this today to a colleague. The British people just have a way of insulting people so beautifully. And Sherlock did it this episode. So Sherlock gets really, really kind of het up because obviously he hasn't got time to be standing around whilst the police are whinging. He kind of like slams the guy into the door and he says, bollock brain. That is beautiful. That is a beautiful insult. I might start using that. It's great. I mean, you probably would not have seen that in the Victorian period, but we're British. We just swear. I mean, they, they basically allowed the British public to name a boat, come up with names. What did we call it? We called it Boaty McBoatface. That should tell you what kind of people you're dealing with over here. <laughs> we, we like just using random words to insult people. It's just what we do. Sherlock reminds the police that the murderer is now still on board because the murderer simply could not have jumped from a moving train. 
The next stop is Grantham, which is ironic because if I was traveling the same route as these guys, I would either have to swap at Grantham or Peterborough, the next station under Grantham, to then get a slow train to get onto my line. So it's quite nice because I know where this has taken place. Just a little treat for me because I know exactly where in the country we are. I've been at Grantham. There's not a lot at Grantham Station. I ended up having... I had a really bad hot chocolate at Grantham, but I might have been a little bit sick and recovering from something, but it was a bad hot chocolate. And then, I love this, we actually get a proper maths problem. Even over here in the UK, you I don't know if it's the same for where you are, you sometimes get really kind of ironic math problems set to you in maths tests. And I know there's a few mathematicians in my comments, so this is something maybe you might find interesting. That we often get stuff like if train A leaves station A at blah blah time and then another train is coming from blah blah, when do they cross? We get a lot of this. That is a set up in the UK a lot. You get that in your maths papers. We kind of get it. So we understand that the train is going 100 miles per hour. Our next stop is set to be 80 miles away, I believe. And then I love it. William Moriarty, our mathematician, just answering off the bat. 48 minutes goes. We have 48 minutes to catch the criminal before they can escape at Grantham. And Lewis t informs us that the Moriartys are not involved in this case, which is nice. So we know that for once, we are not actually chasing Moriarty's footsteps. We're now going to chase a proper murder. A murder where... We don't know the motives, we don't know what's going on, we have no information because we don't have a... When, when it comes to a murder by William or the Moriarty's, we can figure a few things out because we know their motive, we know their goal. But with this, we don't know anything. It's a, it reminded me of Cluedo as well. I, I suck at Cluedo, but this all kind of really reminded me of the Cluedo game. I love the fact that Lewis is all in favour of not getting involved and my boy is showing a little bit a little few hints of jealousy i don't know i want to talk about this right at the end because there's a little thing which kind of bothers me right at the end but we'll get there in a bit because i think i'm gonna be shaming lewis at this point so i need to kind of stay with it until i shame him i love the fact that it's actually william who wants to clear an innocent watson of suspicion which is just so nice of you and guys in case you were wondering what i release upon on wednesday nights no please, man. No please. I love the fact that he goes, it's our no please oblige. Oblige. There we are. A no please oblige, which essentially is a noble obligation. They have an obligation to help out an innocent Watson. I love the fact that even William is like, the police are incompetent. They will not solve this case in 48 minutes. It's just Lewis again. Lewis showing that tiny weeny hints of jealousy where he's not a fan of the fact that Sherlock is calling William Liam. Way too familiar, man. Don't do it. But William states to Sherlock that I might be able to solve this case really, really quickly. So the contest is now on. Who is going to be able to find the culprit first? Mummy, Mummy Bear, Mummy Bear is taken away into custody and the game is on. The game is now afoot. This is quite a nice little sequence. There's not too much going on, but this sequence does show us a few little details between how both of them work. I love the fact that we start with a lock picking from Sherlock and his skills now increasing. He would be good at Skyrim, I think. I think Sherlock would love it if he had a PlayStation or an Xbox or something. I think he really would enjoy games like crime, criminal games. We arrive upon our crime scene and the anime does it for us. It starts to focus in on all the key points. I figured out one bit and I'm quite proud of myself, so I'll get there in a little bit. So Sherlock even says, I've nearly figured it out already, so that's how quick. And our victim is Trevor Redwood. He is a jeweler because he's carrying a business card with him. I like the fact that the anime also recreates the scene for us. So it's all done in this sketching motion. The, the blood is colour plopped as usual. We expect this now from this anime. This anime is going to be king of colour popping. Our perpetrator is a male who boarded at Durham. But how do we know? How do we know? And he goes even further saying that he tried to drug the victim and failed. That's when he used a knife. I like the fact that it's Lestrade who is sat there shocked at this revelation that it's not just a murder. And William and Sherlock both look at him with that face going, well, duh. Smart cookies. And Lestrade is left out going, oh my God, there are two Holmeses right now. Twice the amount of Lestrade abuse. In another universe, guys, there is a show somewhere where William and Sherlock work together. I, I would love to see that show, but I'm not in that universe, sadly. There are two sets of footprints on the floor, and one set is covered in mud. That is when we look at the feet of our professor, 
who also has muddy feet because apparently it was raining in Durham. When isn't it? No offence, guys. It's always raining in the north. It, it generally always rains in the UK. I mean, it rained today for a little bit as well. It's always raining. The weather ended up being a little bit better down as they went further south. Eh, I guess so. I hope you're lucky. Last time I went to York, it was also raining. The whiskey was laced in chloral, which I think is a narcotic because it's supposed to put you to sleep. It's the same thing, which is in chloroform, but it's just a different version of chloroform. So initially, whoever it was had no intention of murdering this man. But however, something went wrong. Something unexpected happened. And I like the fact, again, that we see the scene recreated just to show us what it would have been like to visualise it, where maybe the drug wasn't strong enough, maybe the victim just woke up. And we then see the thumb mark. So all the little things the, an the anime is handed to you, giving you little clues. We see the thumb mark on the victim's face. It indicates that he used a knife, but then he also tried to stop the bleeding because he initially didn't want to kill the victim. It really is Cluedo. He did it with a knife. I like the way that a case comes together with these two. The guy tried to pry open a case. So obviously this guy's a jeweler. He must have jewels. He must have diamonds or even just nice things with him in that case. But obviously he started to panic. The killer ends up taking the knife. And that is when he ended up taking the room key and leaving. And these two just work so well together. I, I really want that spin-off show when they do work together for towards the greater, the greater good. It's actually quite a nice episode to end it with. And it's just the fact that they both stare at each other just very briefly because they're both, they're both on the same wavelength. They both get it. They are now done with the crime scene. This is when the sad moment happens. And this, this kind of pulled on my heartstrings a little bit. Dad calls for mum. Oh my God. He actually goes, let's go Watson. And then he realises that Watson isn't there anymore. And it's so sad. Mum isn't there. And it's just, he realises the mistake he's made. And you kind of see that regret that, he really does regret what happened and he's now starting to show a little bit of guilt and remorse. His boy isn't with him. I mean, you can see William walking around with Lewis, but where's your boy? Your boy's been accused of a murder. The two split up and that is when things get a little bit interesting, but we also see quite a nice little animation sequence now. We use the idea of switching vocals. So if you've ever heard of a song where they switch the vocals around, but we get switching VAs. So the two actually take it in turns to narrate this next sequence because both of them are obviously going through the motions and they're both hitting these conclusions. We see William looking at the passenger list and he also looks at the blueprints. A moment, we know how it always goes. We need the Lewis appreciation moment because he's my boy. I also want to show you guys my cool background. Look at my background. Just look at it. Look at my boy. He's in a bunny costume. I love it. This is my background. It used to be Owen Smith from Attack on Titan, but as you guys know, is not really in it anymore. So I had to get a new boy. So I've got a new background. If you want to get this image yourself, I have a link down in the comments, comment section down below, taking you to Zero Chan and taking you to the artist. So you guys can go over there and admire this artist's work. I really like it. So I like turning my phone on and just tapping and checking the time. Let's go back to my appreciating Lewis moment. Jealous, jealous boy, my baby, my baby is jealous. And he's kind of staring Sherlock down as he walks away. He says he's the one man in the world that William actually pays respect to, but he's just a pawn. But then he's also kind of jealous, a little confused that how casual Sherlock is addressing him and the fact that he's just issuing challenges like that. And he gets really angry because he even clenches his fist. He says, if he stops being of use, I'll... And it's definitely a stabby stabby moment. Lewis wants to stab stab, but he's interrupted. And I've also put in little kind of small quotes is lewis the weak link now you can probably understand why i'm feeling a little bit bad by saying it and where you you guys might be able to see my line of thought as it gets towards the point at the end which makes me think this i'm just wondering if william was on his own i believe he would probably have a higher chance of not being figured out not being being able to hide for a bit longer as we like to point out it's not just William. It is free. There's three Moriarty's here and there's a lot of people involved. So I believe at some point the undoing is simply just going to be the fact that there's too many of them. Someone at some point is going to have a slightly different opinion or something. I'm just keeping an eye on it. There's been a few little moments. There was one on the Noatic when Albert got a little bit 
pushy as he was expecting things to go a little bit faster. So he was a little bit pushy. And then there's been a few moments, especially this episode, it shines Lewis in a bit of an odd light. So just keeping an eye on it. I don't think it's anything for now. I think it's definitely something that's going to be built up in time. So just keeping a little eye on it. We are interrupted by William, who has now figured something out. We do get an odd moment. This gave me a red herring because I thought it was the guy who shakes hands with him. But he ends up shaking hands with the guy who gave him the passenger list. It's the fact that he's wearing gloves. And there's a bit of a linger and the music starts to go. So I officially thought it must be this guy. But it's not. It's a bit of a red herring. It's also a point where William figures out the issue with the gloves. That's where we get the music cue because William is starting to figure things out. Things are starting to move. So we get an audio cue. I like the fact that they also show William predicting how Holmes is going to work things out. He's going to use circumstantial evidence to try figuring out who got him to drink the drink and who the footsteps belong to. It's a process of elimination. He's essentially just going to go down a list and narrow it all down. However, we're going to see how William works now, where William will be putting together a psychological profile of the killer's mind. So different techniques and the fact that William's technique is unique to William because he understands the criminal mind. He is the king criminal. He knows how to figure things out. He's the crime consultant. To be able to understand crime, you have to be able to look at it from a criminal's point of view, which is what William has. I know last week I had my daddy was falling down my list a little bit. He he has redeemed himself, guys. We then get William and Lewis discussing over tea that the culprit was upset at the unexpected event. And they ended up locking the door out of fear of discovery. And that's when we also see William testing Lewis, which is quite nice. Why did the culprit go to the bathroom? I feel so bad, but I also feel really happy. I basically went, well, he had blood in his hands. He must have tried to wash his blood off. Which I then said, no, that's too simple. That can't be it. That's just stupid. But it actually is half the answer because he did have blood on his hands. So he wanted to wash it off. I just feel so bad because I actually bashed myself. I was like, nah, that's too simple for this. And I was like, nah, that can't be it. There has to be another reason. Lewis picks up the fact that he was carrying the weapon and the room key. So he needed to discard those because... Obviously, that links him to the murder. He needs to get rid of them. And that's when we find out that he must have thrown them out the window. So if we look down the tracks, we're going to find the murder weapon. Yes, it is also the fact that the killer couldn't dispose of his clothing. So he needed to wash his clothing. So he had to obviously get rid of any of the blood. My simple answer, as simple as it may have been, it was still part of the answer. So I need to give myself more credit. And that is also where... Moriarty tells us, oh yeah, Holmes is going to start seeing these footprints in different sizes everywhere. They're all going to be identical footprints, but in different sizes. And that is when we we get our first change of voice actor. We change back to Sherlock. He sees that the shoes are all issued to the crewmen. So it's starting to narrow things down. I mean, there's less crewmen than there are passengers. And that it's also apparently natural to offer a first class passenger a drink it wouldn't have been odd for this guy to go up to them and go hey here's a drink you get that in first class in planes they still offer you drinks and stuff a crew member could not remove their jacket gloves or their uniform it's part of their uniform they still have to be wearing that uniform and the gloves which is probably where we start linking up what moriarty was thinking they were all individually issued so they've all got initials in them so they've They can't just throw them out because that's your initials. Everyone's going to be able to find your gloves and your jacket and it will have your initials in it. So it's as good as signing your own name at a crime scene. And then we get a swap back to William's voice actor. And it's nice because we're seeing both of them solving the case at their own pace. But they're all going down the same line of thought. We now know that there are six crewmen on board. William knows that Holmes is going to gather them all up for everybody. And it then shows us Sherlock is actually lagging. He is slightly behind William at this point. So he hasn't quite got there yet. He's a little bit behind. He's not far behind. And again, we do see him reach the same conclusion eventually. But William is just one step ahead, just one teeny tiny step ahead where he says, I'm going to go and meet them all before Sherlock does that because there's something I need to do first. He is one step ahead of the game. If he wasn't that quick, he would not have been able to do what he's about to do. It cuts now to the sequence with Sherlock in front of our six. I was sidetracked by the guy who initially shook William's hand, but it wasn't him. And I, I, it's just how clever the anime wanted to be. Holmes calls forward two men with 10 inch size feet. So thankfully, 
we've now narrowed six down to two. So he's going to be 50-50. He's going to pick out the right one between 50-50. So Lestrade is called forth to go and check the gloves. The culprit is found. He has wet gloves and he won't. He refuses to open his hands because he's hiding bloodstains. Killer is Eddie Hawthorne and Watson then starts to get cleared. However, Eddie, not wanting to kind of give the game up just too soon, he starts to try clearing himself by saying, actually, no, this blood is my own. I injured myself. That's mine. My bad. That's also where I noticed it was so quick. They didn't think I'd catch on, but I saw it. We, we get a very quick green filter it is so fast it's like not like the filters we've seen so far in the anime it flicks up it flicks down it's really really quick it's like a little flash it happens when we see him showing up the fact that his palms have got cuts on them however i even said well he may have cut himself on the murder weapon the knife right and that green filter proving at that point that yes eddie is our indeed our murder green often meaning envy jealousy it can be as well idea of lying this man is trying to lie right now he's it's really clear it's him as well because look at the face guys look at the face he says like we've heard this before you have no proof apart from that face um, if only that face was enough to get this guy because it's so obvious that it's him the weapon is also going to be kind of useless because it won't have any prints on because they're wearing gloves. We are now stuck with what we had last week. We are stuck with no devil's proof. We haven't got that devil's proof like we heard last week mentioned. We know it's this guy, but we don't have that one teeny tiny bit of proof that would prove it. We don't have that single bit of information. It's the same kind of situation we saw last week when we had William versus Sherlock in their kind of stalemate. We just don't have any evidence against William, so we can't prove it. But thankfully this week, William's actually on our side, guys. So he's the one who comes forward and breaks the stalemate. He says, if you cut your hands through the glove, why is there blood, blood also on your glasses? And it's those tiny details, which I did think was a little bit weird. I'm so glad they kind of say why it's weird a bit later on. I did think it was weird. I just kind of figured it. it's a bit weird that Sherlock didn't see it. And he said the blood won't fly up from there if you are cutting yourself. And that's when we see William starting to take the helm and start to threaten our friend by going, I can point out more evidence if you wanted to. And that is when we finally get our admittance from Eddie. The case is closed. And the main theme for Moriarty the Patriot starts to play. I love it. And it's probably going to be the last time we hear that main theme for a little bit of a while now as well. This is such a good episode, but it's so sad because I know what it means. Grantham is now in three minutes time. The case has been closed perfectly on time. But then as our boys, William and Lewis are leaving, Sherlock calls out. He really calls out William's bluffing skills. So he figured it out. He figured out that William bluffed. The way this got resolved actually shows us the one main difference between our two detectives. We get a little line from Lestrade who thinks it is destiny that there is another big brain to rival Holmes who is on board working in contrary with him. He, he's kind of thinking it is a bit ironic that there's two amazing brains in the same place at once. We finally get up why it's a bit weird that William was able to kind of do what he did. William was indeed the one who put the blood on Eddie's glasses and that is our bluff. Sherlock called out the bluff. He knew that William had done a bluff. He anticipated that the killer would try and deny it. So he ended up playing Hansy, which is quite cool. I like the fact that they show him like touching everybody. Something you can't do nowadays, my friend. But William ends up playing Hansies with everybody just before Holmes actually called them in. He was one step ahead of Sherlock. He was just one step ahead of him. Without William, the case would be solved, but a lot more later on, which is when we see Lewis again calling Sherlock out for having a weak endgame. However, William reminds him that Holmes's method would have been enough and you would have eventually got there, but he went outside of the law. He was one step further ahead of where Sherlock would, would not go. Like with the gun, Sherlock didn't go any further. He refused to go over the line to shoot somebody to get what he needed. This week, we see William playing outside of the law and setting somebody up. He set somebody up to get the same result. We all knew this guy was guilty. He just had to knock him and make him believe that we had it all figured out. It ends on him saying he's very, he's too trusting, but that is the one thing I like about Sherlock. 
Oh, he confirms it, guys. He supports mum and dad. He really likes the chemistry between our boys. And this is probably my favourite scene, guys. It's been a great episode. I like seeing the way that they work together. And I like seeing the fact that there are these subtle differences between the two. But this is the moment I've been waiting for. The moment with mum and dad. The This is the makeup. Oh, my awkward weirdo. This is me. This is the awkward weirdo moment. It's just nice to see mum pondering the irony of telling Sherlock to become a murderer, but it was actually him who ended up being penned as one. And dad. Dad. Oh my god. The awkward, nervous mess. Can't even goddamn apologise. It is... It's an awe moment. I was awing. I was just going, oh, it's so cute. And he kind of stumbles over his words, and then he starts to, like, stir his whiskey with his finger because he's, like, nervous and anxious because he doesn't want to apologise, but he's trying his best to apologise. My guess is he's probably never tried to apologise to somebody before. He, he then goes, if, if you're okay with all that, I, I wouldn't mind, like, teaming up with you again. Uh, it's, that's your apology? That's the best you've got? You're the brilliant detective, but that's the best you've got. But it really is just the sweetest moment between these two. I, I'm so glad that mum and dad are making up before the, the end, before the season end. Watson tries to play a little bit evasive. He winds up Sherlock a little bit more because he wants to just pull the situation out a bit more. He's milking the situation for all he's got because he's probably not going to get this very often from Sherlock. He starts to be a bit more evasive where Sherlock goes, wait, are we a team or are we not a team? What does that mean? Watson makes a really cute joke about the match. Sherlock can't work without the matches from Watson, which is so cute. But then we get a green filter, which shows us that this sequence takes place once the guys are back in London. And this green filter, the green of jealousy, envy, and greed. And somebody is watching the two. And I'm going to admit, I don't know who it is. I think it's one of two people. It's either Lewis, which really breaks my heart because I do think Lewis might be the weak link. Or it could be Fred in disguise. We've seen that Fred is really, really good at disguising himself. It could just be Fred monitoring the two. I feel like it's Lewis. And that makes me worry. Oh no, Lewis, are you going to be the undoing? But yes, that's the bit I told you guys that I feel bad pinning it on him. We don't get a clear shot of the other side of his face, but it could still be Fred because Fred's got that youthful look. It just, it looks like whoever it is has blonde hair. So, ugh, bit of a stretch, bit of a stretch. Now, guys, I'm not going to lie. If this next scene hadn't happened, I was actually going to go, hey, guys, in the comments, can you tell me, where's Mycroft? <sighs> I, oh my God, Mycroft is here. Ah. <laughs> I'm so happy. We cut to a shot of a palace and we see Mycroft, who reports to Queen Victoria, of course, where we find out that some documents have been stolen. But these are not any old documents. These are Great Britain's greatest secrets. That's when we hear Mycroft ask, have we had any demands? Have there, has there been any contact from our culprit? Where Queen Victoria now decrees that Mycroft can use whatever method you see fit, no matter how ruthless, to retrieve those documents. And that end line in English as well. Yes, your majesty. Hello, Sebastian. I didn't realise we were in Black Butler. Hello. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy we teased Mycroft before we go into the next section. I was going to ask you guys as well. I was going to go, guys, where's Mycroft? I'm pretty sure he needs to make an appoint appearance. Mycroft Holmes, guys. Mycroft is the older brother for Sherlock. I believe he's older. So yeah, he's, he's definitely older. I think he's older by a good seven years. But yeah, he's a government official. He's definitely in that in politics. So he's a little higher up than where our boy detective is playing. But uh, as I told you guys, I really liked the portrayal of Mycroft with Stephen Fry. But I don't think this anime is going for a light-hearted take on Mycroft. I'm expecting him to take, play quite a serious role. But then again, we have only just seen his face, so we don't know. So maybe he will have some more of those weird quirks that our boy has. And that is the last time we then hear our outro. The outro for me is probably the best. I like the visuals. I like what it stands for. I like the foreshadowing with the falls at the end. Those are the Reichenbach falls. I still think that is a nod to where Sherlock and Moriarty will have their final showdown. So yes, Moriarty the Patriot. Oh my god, wow. I am thoroughly impressed with the series. I'm also... Amazed, to, obviously, as I've been talking to you guys, obviously, we found out that episode one wasn't actually 
in the manga. It wasn't written down. The guys came together to make a fantastic episode one to get the feeling of Moriarty out there, to promote it to people, because it actually aired two weeks before the main anime started to air, so it gave it plenty of time for it to hype everybody up. And it did that. This anime throughout the entire season has just been hype. It's been twists. It's been turns. It's been done in such a way which every episode keeps you hooked. I love the use of the filters. I love the use of colour popping. I adore the artwork. The artwork is absolutely gorgeous. I love it, guys. Again, my favourite boy is Lewis for some reason, but I'm starting to worry that he's probably going to be the downfall of our boy. But then I do like Sherlock, but I think I like Sherlock. I like Sherlock because he reminds me of myself. He's got more of those really odd quirks. A lot of people do say that I'm, I'm very hyper, I'm very odd. There's a few things that Sherlock does, even just on little scales that I do. And I'm, I think I admire him because he reminds me of myself. So see, I like being able to relate to a character. It's not the first time we've followed an antagonist. A few of you guys have mentioned things like Death Note. We have Code Geass as well, where we follow Zero. There's been a few anime where we followed from a darker perspective but this anime does that really well and it follows in those footsteps i think it does do things like death note justice obviously i don't think it's as clever as death note is but then again we are only on season one so there's plenty of going on you guys have also said there's a lot of information missing so there's a lot i think they could build on it would be nice as well if we get some ovas with some of those missing details just to give us backstories on people like moran and fred I have questions about Fred. <laughs> you know, you guys know I have questions about Fred. I want to know more. It's been a really good anime and all it as well in all fashion. I always give a overall score. So this is the second anime on the channel now to finish airing this season. I am giving Moriarty the Patriot 8.4 out of 10. So I gave it a high score on Mal, my anime list. It has got a 7.9. So I'm roughly in the ballpark as everybody else is feeling. The average coming in about 8. So I'm definitely there. I, I worked it out quite nicely. I do figure it out. I got a little scale. Maybe one day I'll like break it down with you guys. How I try and figure out roughly where an anime falls. I got a lot of personal entertainment with this. Also, as a, again, it's a personal thing. I've really enjoyed talking to you guys. So I am airing on five animes this season and each of the anime videos obviously you get people you get your little kind of people talking about a certain anime you guys have been by far the most fun to talk to and i really love how you guys have been interacting and we will get to chat to one another and it feels comfortable a few of you guys have said it just feels so comfortable that we can all nerd out with an anime like this i think to me that's also why it's the first anime where i've kind of gone a step closer to achieving what I want to achieve on my channel so it's got maybe a slightly higher mark than my anime list is giving it but because it means a little bit more to me I'm giving it slightly higher also I've just had so much enjoyment breaking this anime down I have recently also just watched ID Invaded only because I missed out on watching it the only reason I'm going to mention ID Invaded is because a few of you guys seem to like animes like this where there's a lot going on there's a lot of plot going on there's a deeper meaning a deeper metaphysical meaning or something to it I recommend you guys check this one out in the spare time in the lowdown between the two seasons it's darker or you might have already seen it I ended up giving that one a nine because I fell in love with it there's a lot of stuff going on I I kind of might even do a review on it at some point very soon because I really enjoyed it but that's that's my give back to you guys in case you've got some time now to kill before things like Promised Neverland come our way yes I am releasing on Promised Neverland I definitely recommend you guys to check that one out as well season two airs in about two weeks I think it's going to be the replacement for Moriarty the Patriot whilst I wait for part two anyway it's gonna hopefully replace us with some mystery there's a very deep mystery going on over there so I think that's gonna be fun it's one of those animes where being somebody who lives in the UK I get excited watching Moriarty the Patriot for different reasons than you guys might so I love animated bits but there's just something special about having an anime set in your own country where you can relate to the places, the people, the food. I had it when I watched the Ancient Magus Bride. That was a bit where they went to King's Cross and it was fantastic. I Again, another anime I fully recommend. I, I definitely need to sort out a formula where I can start talking about more animes.
Believe it or not, guys, I have watched over 700 animes. I just haven't got round to doing anything YouTube related. So this is the first time I've tried to talk about what it is I love. I definitely love Moriarty the Patriot. I am now going to be waiting until April comes. And you can mark my words, I will definitely be breaking down Moriarty the Patriot season one part two when it hits the channel i will be definitely doing that so you will need to make sure you guys are subscribed because i suspect you'll lose track of the chat the channel otherwise if you don't f give that little sub thank you guys so much for tuning in weekly because there have been those guys who do tune in weekly and leave a comment and i love reading those comments i've had so much fun this anime is something special it's got a beautiful atmosphere the world building is fantastic i can tell you even though some of the historical elements are not quite there and yes our professionals aren't quite impressed but for an animation for an anime which where the studio is based in japan and they probably don't have the biggest understanding upon the english culture i think they've done absolutely amazing to get that english feel across there were parts where sometimes they would say something which wouldn't be quite right it, on a scale of how english i feel like the anime is it's definitely coming up in the eights it's not quite there and there's bits where it fails but it's done fantastic other animes which have got are based in the UK, you've got Black Butler, you've got things like Ancient Mega's Bride, Burn the Witch, one I really, really want to check out at some point. It's a movie based in London. k -On as well. I think k -On has an episode when they're in London as well. That might have been the movie at Christmas. But it's just, it's unique to find an anime based in the UK. So it's quite nice for me to get my hands on it, be able to give you some history. As you guys know, I took history. I adore history i love anime as well i like crime a good a good detective story I, I like failing at cluedo i love sherlock holmes i love this i think it is one of the best retellings of sherlock holmes we've had in the anime world for quite a while because we did have a sherlock holmes anime come out last year it was interesting and we had a lot of kabuki theater thrown into it it's kabuki joe sherlock or something i'll put the link on the screen go check it out but it it's nothing like this it's nothing on the same level as moriarty the patriot is and i think moriarty the patriot is way more thrilling to watch one of my top two anime to look forward to weekly monday sunday was my favorite days i don't enjoy editing the videos because they take forever but it was worth it to see you guys actually responding so thank you so so much i'm so sad to be seeing you guys go now this will be the last time I talk to you guys about Moriarty the Patriot in 2020. But I really, really hope that I get to see you guys again next season for some other animes. Let's dig, dig our teeth into a different anime, talk about other animations. Or I will just see you guys again in April, but I really cannot wait to see you guys then. And I really hope that your 2021, guys, is going to be fantastic and so much better than the year that we've had. Goodbye, guys, and thank you so much. Bye-bye.